So now with the on-off control strategy, uh, the on-off control strategy is an automatic control, it's not manual, uh, mean I don't have to uh, sit next to the process 24-7, uh, so it's a good thing. Uh, one of the disadvantage of on-off uh, algorithm or strategy, you will never get exactly the set point, you will hover over the set point. It's either you will go above or beyond the set point. But one of the advantage is you can use a digital output as your output. You don't need to use an analog output. And this means <clears throat> this method is really inexpensive. You maybe have to use hysteresis. We'll explain what hysteresis in the next slide. So on-off control, if I want to write the equation for an on-off control, it's really very easy. If my PV, which is the white curve, less than the set point, I need the controller to be on, to be one. Once I <clears throat> reach the set point or go above it, uh, I need to turn off the controller. So it is on, off, on, off, on, off. Or I can see the off or zero when I have, I don't have an error or the error zero or less than zero. Or if I have error more than zero, then it is one. You have to remember the error is the set point minus the PV. So I can rewrite this exactly the same thing. Zero when the set point equal PV. One when the set point is higher than PV. Now, if, uh, about the hysteresis for the next slide, I will add, as you, as you saw here in the previous one, it's really a lot of on-off. This will stress my actuator. But if I add another value, like a set point plus hysteresis, and one below the set point is set point minus hysteresis, so my PV, the white curve, if it is less than the set point minus hysteresis, it will be one. So my controller will be on, and it will latch on, and it will only turn off when the PV is higher than the set point plus hysteresis. So it will turn off then the value my PV will go down definitely because the controller is off. Once it's below the set point minus hysteresis, then it will turn on and so on and so forth. So it is on, off, on, off, on, off. And now it's less stress for the actuator. Writing the equation is exactly the same thing. My controller will be zero when my PV is higher than set point plus hysteresis or it is one when my PV is less than hysteresis, or I can write it in error, uh, means it is zero when the error is higher than hysteresis, and it is one when the error is less than uh, minus hysteresis. Just to have a comparison between both of them, uh, you can see how there are more frequency of on-off in this side, no hysteresis, so it's really uh, to relieve the actuator, uh, we use a hysteresis with it. Uh, they use this uh, a lot in um, uh, temperature control because the heater can take this stress, uh, So and it's, it's cheap, it's cheaper than the, the other method. Now, for, uh, the, <clears throat> for the, the, the Simulink model, I just want to have a comparison before we go there. It, it's really important to understand. This side here is my manual control. As you can notice, there is no connection between my PV, which is my analog input, and the output. The connection between them is myself. I'm changing the slider gain, from 0 to 255 to control controlling directly the Arduino pulse width modulation. And I see how much is this value. And remember, my set point is in my head. So I change the output till I get the PV I want. The Arduino and the, the output and the input are connected in the loop, the LED with the LDR. But in the on off control, we will notice now. There is the slider gain, it's not the control output anymore. The control output is actually here. Here, my, my slider gain is actually a set point. So this is now my set point. I choose a set point and the controller will compare the set point minus the PV, which is the error. 
we just said it, the error is a, a, a set point minus PV. And this, what inside the year, it's exactly the equation we just saw. The error equals zero or equal to one. So if it is the error, if we have error, uh, then it is one. If I don't have error, then it is zero. So it is either on or off. I can use uh, a digital pen to do it. Uh, very normal, but I chose to use a PWM so that I don't have to change the wiring. That's the only purpose. So my output of the relay, we will see later, I told him it's either 0 or 255. I can use any digital pen as my output. I don't have to use the password modulation. Now let's go to the MATLAB. So back to MATLAB, you open the MATLAB, you click on Simulink, and you start with the blank model and i already built my model it's here so you go also add the scopes and you add uh, from uh, the arduino library you add the pulse width modulation i used pin 11 and the analog input analog input one and just a reminder it's the same as the last video you can go if you don't have the arduino library you go run on target install support packages and you choose arduino from the list the only new block here uh, compared to the manual, it's the relay. You will find this in uh, this uh, discontinuities library. It's the relay. It's there on off. They call it relay. And if you double click on it, uh, this is the hysteresis we just learned about. So I want to switch on if the error is more than 10. And I want to switch it off if the error is less than 5. My output, since I said oh, I'm using uh, the, the analog as a digital, so my output will be 255, which is a 5 volt in the Arduino, when it is on and 0 when it is off. So that's, that's the whole thing. We make sure that uh, the simulation uh, parameter are uh, correct. I'm using the right port, so yes, it's the Mega, and the host is uh, COM port 6, uh, as I checked in the device manager. And if everything is okay, we deploy uh, the model to the Arduino. What happens right now is the Simulink will take uh, those uh, those blocks and uh, change, uh, translate them to a C and program our Arduino. One thing else you need to remember also, uh, we need to use it an external so that we can uh, uh, in real time change the value and uh, the time here should be also an infinity. Now, this is the slider game. It's the same we used in the manual, but in the manual we used it. This is finished. So now we can start simulation. It will take also some time. So back. This is the slider game. The slider game in the manual uh, repre uh, was representing uh, the controller output. Now it's representing my set point as we explained so now i'm changing my set point through here and i will let the controller based on the set point and the current pv value basically based on the error he will choose either on or off output i'm just waiting uh if the time here start counting mean i'm good to go and start yep. and you can see the led already start flashing so uh, I'll open this and I'll bring all scopes forward. Cool. So, what happens here? My set point is 600. I can see 604. I can see the PV is hovering around this is the pv scope this is the controller out uh, output scope and this is the error scope and the controller output just a reminder in manual control i use to change this by the slider gain now the controller is turning the output on and off that's why it is on and off so i'll change I'll change the set one to a 400, and you will notice now the the PV is hovering around the set point. I'm having less frequency on the on-off, and you can see the error, and you can see the light is actually flashing slowly. I'll change now my set point to a 900, and you can see the flashing rate is even faster, and we can see it here in the controller output, 
and here we can see the PV is really hovering around uh, the 900. So once it's reached it, turn on and off, and we can change. Uh, you have to remember I chose here 0 to 1000. 24 but in reality as we tested in the manual my set point range really i can't go uh, i think below 300 let's check this if my set point is 146 and my uh, led is fully turned off but i'm also not reaching that because of the ambient light if i'm using a, a darker uh, place or a, a, a more uh, sealable uh, box probably i will reach there and the same thing if I put it to a thousand uh, nine hundred something, uh, I probably I will not get that. Also, I see here I still have some error because it's a maximum, but I can't go above this, so it's saturated. I can't go, so my error I still have an error, and my output should be if I change this. Uh, let's show three hundred the scale, so I can see it. It's really at two fifty five. My output is at its maximum. I'll change also this scale to put it a uh, thousand hundred fifty just to see the values. So if I choose in something between, I can really see the on off operation. Uh, the capacitor I added to my loop, if you remember uh, from the loop setup video, uh, it's actually affecting how the on off is being. If I remove the capacitor, I will have even more frequency for the on off. So basically, this is uh, the on-off uh, algorithm or mode. Uh, my controller output either fully on or a zero, either on or off. Uh, I can use a digital output to do this, either true or false. And you can see my uh, my actuator is actually, I'm stressing it with on-off. It's I know it's now light, it's not a big deal. And uh, my output, my PV is not really steady on uh, my set point. So those are the main uh, characteristic for uh, on-off control. Now let's go back to the um, uh, PowerPoint and let's see next the peak control.